All right, everybody, we're going to talk about fentreasure.com, solve, and how to use your imagination. Um, this is a, a great picture to start out with. We have Forrest Fenn. Uh, note the headdresses in the background. Uh, we got the headdresses. Uh, these are hanging on the wall. Uh, like Sasha mentioned, these are rare and can't just be sold, um, but they have value um, and they have to be gifted or something or given to a uh, museum or something uh, because they have uh, a lot of significance. Uh, and uh, we have over here uh, Minnie Hollywood and her husband Hollywood. She was permitted to wear the headdress and um, she fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn. And uh, let's talk about the these stories. The salamander, uh, everyone kind of makes fun of uh, the 800 foot salamander on the side of the mountain that I found, but as it goes, salamander lore, the salamander folklore or legend says that the salamander can the salamander is can be in the fire and goes unharmed kind of like this picture shows the uh, fire doesn't seem to affect or hurt the uh, salamander and I think the guy's trying to um, kick him out of the fire because he enjoys the fire too much um, uh, salamanders salamanders in 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 their natural environment can lose a tail can lose uh, fingers uh, possibly arms yeah arms and regenerate so they have this uh, ability to escape danger and regenerate um, and and that's a very unique feature about salamanders uh, salamanders you know salamanders do match forest fans jars and bells you know all the different metamorphosis creatures butterflies dragonflies um, and because um, and frogs even all the fen creatures or uh, you know the word the name forest fen if you take the words literally forest with one r and fen with one n that is forest creatures you know the bog marsh creatures uh, and the dragonfly the butterfly the frog even the salamander and other things are those metamorphosis and forest fen creatures literally so we have um, but you, you start to look at the legend and lore of the salamander and the salamander walks away unharmed and part of that legend comes from when uh, in old England or other places they would throw a log on the fire and next thing you know we see a salamander coming running out of the fire unharmed and even surprisingly enough um, I don't know if I, oh, I can't do this uh, let's, here's another picture with Finn and the uh, headdresses we'll talk about in a second um, the axolotl uh, this is a Mexican axolotl uh, axolotl has similar a similar uh, mythological things in their culture the axolotl was brother was uh, I think the proper pronunciation is axolo 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 and um, the uh, the god or the deity Sholo was uh, was it was demanded of him to be sacrificed to the sun and moon god or something to that effect and be thrown into the fire well he refused 
because he didn't want to be consumed and uh, perish in the fire, so he escaped and evidently jumped into the water. And um, uh, so it's brother to Quetzalcoatl. Um, a very s interesting parallel. And then Axolotl or uh, Axolo means, um, means uh, water dog or dog water. Um, um, water dog, I guess. All right, so there is some mythological symbolisms here. Now, what am I saying about using imagination? I want to talk about using our imagination in a way similar to Finn. I, I think in the next few minutes you may have a better understanding of the poem than you ever have. Okay, I know it seems a little ridiculous, this correlation, but we're going to read the poem in a minute. Uh, but let's take a, an idea that seems f like quite different than the axolotl and salamander folklore. And let's look at Minnie Hollowood. Minnie Hollowood fought in the Battle of Little Bighorn. Um, let, me, uh, let me get this graphic. Okay. In the Battle of Little Bighorn, and it was a, a terrible battle, but um, far and away the Indians defeated uh, General Custer, Custer's last stand. Okay, this battle was seen in vision by um, Sitting Bull. Uh, he's, he smoked a pipe and had a vision and cut his arms in symbolism of self-sacrifice before this battle took place and he had a vision that all the soldiers would be uh, upside down and basically falling into their camp like uh, defeated by the uh, Indian army and it was several thousand Indians in this battle and Custer greatly underestimated uh, the ability of the Indians in, in multiple ways. He, had, he, he didn't wait for the backup of uh, General um, Gibbon and other things. Uh, and I th think that's, there's some interesting parallels here. Uh, Minnie Hollywood is directly connected to Sitting Bull and Forrest Fenn's Peace Pipe. Um, um, the Gibbon River is obviously named after uh, this General Gibbon. Um, and, okay, and Madison Junction, the Firehole River, let's just keep that on the back burner for a minute. Uh, all right, Battle of Little Bighorn. Now, Minnie Hollywood was 20 years old during at this battle, uh, about 20 years old, and she was awarded she was awarded the headdress and permitted to wear the headdress because of her bravery in battle her bravery in battle at the battle of little bighorn um, and surprisingly they uh they also call this um, um the indians called it the battle of the greasy grass which is a uh, creek near near or possibly the same as Bighorn River. Yeah, near the Little Bighorn River. Okay, so uh, greasy grass could could parallel some of Fenn's discussion about the green grass in the river. Um, Forrest Fenn loves to collect. Uh, he, he said that he would love to have fought in this battle on the side of the Indians. Uh, he said that uh, um, he said several. There's several scrapbooks relating to, uh, like the one scrapbook about Joe. I, I, let me see. That's uh, 102 or something. Let me see. Uh, 181. Scrapbook 181. And um, there's other. Other 
importance to Finn, like some of his books that he collected are regarding the Battle of the Little Bighorn, the journal of uh, one of the uh, soldiers that fought next to Custer. Um, and there's no doubt that he appreciated the history of Minnie Hollywood and other Indians. Uh, it's, it's not a well-known story at all. Um, okay. But, how does this have anything to do with the poem? Salamanders, Mini Hollywood. Okay, using our imagination, I think, I think Fenn would like to imagine himself as Mini Hollywood, first of all, fighting in that battle uh, with intense bravery. Uh, this is the kind of person who didn't, didn't let the fact that she was a woman stop her from fighting in this battle of all men uh, where uh, where she might have had a huge disadvantage uh, fighting against the men but it didn't stop her she was brave and her name is Hollywood but I think brave and in the wood is kind of a, co a new phrase that Fenn is coining if you are brave and in the wood I give you title to the gold. Kind of like the salamander in the fire. He's brave and in the wood. He's not afraid of the fire. Um, he escapes the fire unharmed. Mini Hollywood in the fire for sure. Um, in the thick of things, brave and in the wood. Um, a hint at her name, Mini Hollywood. I think it's a valid idea and solution. It doesn't have to be the correct answer, but I don't think people are using their imagination enough. Uh, all these things, uh, I believe the uh, 800 foot salamander geoglyph is symbolic or, or worthy of Fenn's treasure location simply because of the symbolisms. Uh, the salamander represents the element of fire. Okay, if you read, the, let's read the poem thinking of this sort of thing. Let's go back. Uh, um, as I have gone alone in there. Fenn wants to be known as, as something like Minnie Hollywood, brave. So as Fenn has gone, as I have gone alone in there, he also has fought in Vietnam. He also fought kidney cancer. He also uh, even in the spirit of Lewis and Clark, he envisioned himself like the actual Lewis and Clark on the trail without a map in, you know, basically in unknown, uncharted territory and uh, river bathing is best even and other stories as I have gone alone in there. So with a little bit of bravery and a little bit of, uh, you know, unknown, uncertainty. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. So he's challenging each of us to be like Mini Hollywood and approach our fears to be in the fire and sure, maybe lose a tail, maybe lose some fingers, but basically come out unharmed, just like Fenn escaped death from kidney cancer. And I, you know, I believe personally that um, that all these things are pointing to the Firehole River as the beginning and Mini Hollywood at the end. Think about it, Firehole River, it represents his, uh, his start in the art business, the foundry, pouring that molten bronze into, from, from the furnace into the molds, okay? That's, that's very symbolic of the Firehole and very symbolic of the salamander and this charting unknown territory in his art business, taking a chance and doing his best to make it work. I'm sure he was scared of what he was trying to accomplish, you know, but he had to do it. Just like Minnie Hollywood was probably scared, but invigorated at the same time by her desire to defend her people and defend her honor, defend her lands, defend the choices that they had made. 
and defend themselves because uh, the peace treaties with Custer and other American generals and, and representatives, all the peace treaties were broken by the white man. And Fenn wants to take the side of the Indians to to perhaps virtue signal a little bit that there was a great injustice done on the American Indians. And uh, it's a very common theme throughout history where the higher military power uh, wins against the weaker military powers. So uh, sometimes these things can't be avoided uh, and the ugliness and the race to the bottom happens a lot in history and we can't stop people from from behaving in these horrible ways uh, because you know I've heard it said that many people fought against slavery and many pop people fought for slavery and many people fought in favor of the injustice towards the American Indians and many fought out of fear and desperation to defeat the Indians um, this has been happening for hundreds of years but Fenn's asking us to be brave asking us to you know to fight against our fears and get off the couch and be s symbolic of of the salamander regenerating and not afraid and symbolic of people like Minnie Hollowood who fought without fear with bravery and kind of like Fenn's phrase brave and in the wood doesn't this make sense that Fenn would be talking about something symbolic like this brave and in the wood as I have gone alone in there as I've gone alone in Vietnam in my jet fighter uh, as I've gone alone in there uh, into the night like uh, like the salamander comes out at night I, as I've gone alone in there uh, the gypsy magic uh, gypsy wagons as I've gone alone in there uh, and possibly some other secret things uh, maybe he's done some other secret things uh, that he's gone alone in there I find it uh, a very interesting idea that he's been that Fenn has is wanting to tell us that he ha also has been brave and in the wood and he's taken chances and he's made taken risks and he made his fortune by doing that he's encouraging us to do the same thing take a chance get out there and find the treasure and have faith and to me this is a little bit of my confirmation Firehole River uh, Fenn's nickname is Forrest Fenn. His avatar sometimes is, or, or Forrest Fire, excuse me. Um, uh, he's kind of claimed that idea of in the fire. And I believe the Firehole River represents this symbolic attempt to, to cast bronze without any understanding or knowledge in that field. But he, came one of the, be, he became one of the best experts in that field through trial and effort and hard work. Um, you know, he became one of the best pilots in Vietnam. These, uh, it's interesting that two of the earliest stories was, were uh, Searching for Lewis and Clark and My War for Me. Think about the symbolisms here. Um, Lewis and Clark and My War for Me kind of align with these, uh, these two concepts, the salamander and the fire and Minnie Hollywood. I think uh, these kind of ideas is using our imagination, putting ourselves in Forrest Fenn's shoes, thinking about how does he feel. So when I read the poem, I think about all the adventures that Fenn had as I have gone alone in there. And if you're brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Uh, interestingly, the first sentence and the last sentence meaning sort of the same thing the start and end of the journey as I have gone alone in there in these various trying circumstances kinda of like Minnie Hollywood went into that battle 
That's what Finn is sort of encouraging us to do, be brave and in the wood. And that's how we win this game. Anyway, uh, email me. Uh, check me out, Facebook forward slash decall. Um, catch me on the flip side after party Wednesday nights. Uh, and um, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, that's my take on it. Thanks.